Hey everyone! So a lot of you have been asking me how much do solutions architects get paid at AWS and how does that compare with other roles in other companies? In this video, I'm joined by Zahir, the co-founder of Levels.FYI, which is a platform that helps compare career levels and salaries across different companies. Zahir was previously a software engineer at AWS and decided to quit his job around three years ago to work on Levels.FYI full-time. If you're someone looking to land a job in the cloud industry, I'd highly recommend watching this video to the end because Zaheer not only breaks down how much AWS solutions architects get paid, but also how to figure out how much you should get paid based on different factors like your location, your role, and years of experience. Let's get into it. Hey Zaheer, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Nice to be here. So to start off with, do you want to tell the viewers a bit about yourself and Levels.FYI? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, my name is Zahir Mohyuddin. I'm one of the co-founders of Levels.FYI. Levels.FYI, if you haven't heard of it, our mission is to help professionals build better careers. And we do that by collecting data and information about companies and careers and helping people essentially um, explore that data. So a lot of people come to the site to see salaries uh, predominantly. And then we also help people compare career ladders and all sorts of things. Um, my background, I'm a software engineer. I started my career at LinkedIn out of college. So I worked there as a software engineer. I worked on the messaging team, building like messaging products, um, got promoted there to a senior engineer. And then I hopped over to Amazon and I was in Amazon Web Services, AWS, uh, and I was a senior engineer over there. Awesome. So getting straight into it, and this is a question I get asked all the time. How much do solutions architects actually get paid at AWS? And what are the factors that determine someone's salary? The biggest factor, and this is important for like negotiations as well, is essentially the level that you get placed at. So where do you fall on the career ladder? Companies decide how to pay people based on like the level and location. Years of experience plays sometimes a factor, but really it comes down to the level. And within a level, you might have someone that's like five years of experience and you might have someone that has 15 years of experience. So really, you know, the, the level is really what you want to look at when you're comparing pay. And in terms of like pay, how much do they actually get paid? Um, again, depends on location level, but I can tell you at least in like the US, the pay will start out around like 160K for like an L4 solution architect. Um, and then at the next level, you're going up to around 215,000. Um, and it goes all the way up to even like 430,000 at the principal level. And it may be even higher. Um, these are like some of the medians that we've been able to collect. Uh, for higher levels, the pay continues to go up and up. It really just depends on the level and location. Great. Thanks so much for explaining the different factors. I know company benefits are also an important part of compensation. So how should people think about benefits and perks when it comes to their total compensation package? Yeah, benefits are part of the total rewards package that a company gives you. It's important to factor in benefits. A lot of different companies have widely varying benefits and oftentimes benefits can add even tens of thousands of dollars in the amount that you're getting paid. You know, it may not be direct monetary compensation, but it's still something that adds value to your paycheck and to what you take home. So as an example, um, a lot of companies will have like retirement benefits and they may be contributing to your retirement accounts or they may have, you know, free lunch, breakfast, dinner, things like like that. And what we do is we actually try to quantify those benefits at levels at FYI as well. So on the site, you can actually see how we quantify benefits and try to assign like a dollar value to how much a company's benefits are. For example, at Amazon, we've quantified it to around $7,000 of benefits per year that a person would be receiving in addition to their total compensation. Again, it's super important when you take that into account. Um, you know, there may be one company that offers slightly less dollar compensation in terms of salaries, but they may offer much better benefits. And uh, depending on your personal situation as well, for example, if you have like health issues or if you need a certain thing, um, we totally recommend that people take those into account. Uh, try to customize it to your situation in terms of the companies that you're selecting. Amazing. Yeah, I love the advice around trying to tailor it based on your own personal situation. So how do you find out the approximate salary based on the factors that you mentioned? Do you want to show us a quick demo? Yeah, of course. Let's do it. So here we are on the main page of the website. It'll let www.levels.fii. What you're looking at here is the career ladders at different companies. So you can see, for example, Google, Facebook, and I'll just pull in Amazon over here. And so you can see, for example, like I was talking about, pay is based on the level. So the first level at Amazon is like SDE1 or a L4 engineer, and then it goes up to L5 and so on and so forth. If you click, we'll show you the compensation for it. This is specifically for software development engineer, but let's say we want to see solution architect salaries. Well, you can search solution architect. You can go ahead and click on the job family. And here we are on the solution architect page. 
And what we're looking at now is the US median compensation for solution architects, right? This is across all companies, across all kind of data points. Um, you know, let's say we want to look at the pay in Australia. Now you can see this is what the median that we have, $145,000. And then you can also see the percentiles. And now as we kind of go down here, you can see all of the different submissions that people have submitted. So it looks like someone at Amazon as a SA3, so the third level essentially, that has 16 years of experience is making $273,000. That's massive. That's great. That's awesome. And you know, now we can click into this and see a bit more detail. So I'm here on the Amazon page. You can also get to it if you search Amazon and I'm gonna to go to Solution Architect. And this page is really awesome. You can see how pay progresses across different levels. And so we can see that people are starting out at roughly like the 200-ish range, a little less than 200. And then they're moving on to 215, a little bit higher 200s. And you can see kind of like the chart, the histogram in some sense of how it goes up for each level. Um, and it gets all the way up to like the 600s uh, for the highest levels. And again, there's different pages for each of the different levels. So let's say we want to look at the first entry level. Um, this is for the US. I'll change it to Australia here. And we can see that at the first level at Amazon, if you were to join Amazon as a solution architect at the first level, you'd be making around $87,000. And you can kind of see all of the data that we have for it over here as well. Yeah, so this is um, how you can use the site to find uh, salaries that are relevant for you and find the data that's uh, for your company as well as for your role. Before we continue our conversation with Zaheer, I'd like to take a moment to introduce today's video sponsor, NordPass. If you're anything like me, you probably also find it hard to remember the passwords to all the accounts you create. NordPass offers a secure password management tool and the NordPass Business Password Manager makes it easy for you to store and manage passwords. The platform helps ease the burden of access to business accounts, making it possible for you and your team to work across devices and apps uninterrupted. As we go into the admin view, you can see that there are options to invite additional team members, observe password security, create groups, and check user activity. I've started to store my own passwords on NordPass to save me the hassle of having to press the forgot password button every time I can't remember my credentials. See NordPass Business in action now with a three month free trial by clicking the link in the description below and using the code TECHWITHLUCY. Now let's get back to the video. So Zahir, most of our viewers are probably those who are at the start of their cloud journey and looking to understand salaries better. What advice would you like to leave with them? The biggest advice I have for folks that are starting their careers is try and get an internship. Um, internships are the easiest way to get a full-time job. And uh, I mean, actually, I started off my career at LinkedIn. And the way I got my job at LinkedIn is because I interned at LinkedIn when I was in college. And so, you know, internships, the approval rating from intern to hire tends to be around like 50 to 80 percent. So about 50 to 80 percent of people that get an internship tend to get hired. It's like a full-time role. And so it's super, super important to actually get internships. Um, and then the other advice I have around pay and salaries is oftentimes, you know, a lot of new grad offers, you typically can't negotiate as much. But even if you're one year in your career or two years plus in your career, always, always negotiate your job offers. You could be leaving literally thousands of dollars on the table. And oftentimes all it takes is just asking them for an increase. Even if you don't have a competing offer, you really just want to make the case and try shooting your shot and asking. And you can do it in a very nice way, essentially, that doesn't put off the company. So saying, hey, I really love this offer, but would we be able to get to this number? Um, and I'd be super excited to join. That said, I love the team, I love the company, and would still be happy regardless. All right, so this brings us to the end of this video. Please give it a like if you learned something new about tech salaries, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.